podcast show where I talk about movies. I'm your host, Mark Koto, a.k.a. Koto Man. For this podcast recording, this will be this will be a two-parter. And this will basically be a Koto Cinema special that will cover two different movies. One that is a fantasy comedy and the other being a biopic. The films that I'm going to talk about is Barbie and Oppenheimer. And since this podcast recording is going to be a two-part special, as I mentioned, both films will be divided into two episodes. Plus, both films, according to the internet, are known as Barbenheimer. So yes, uh, this is a Kodo Cinema special, with movie topic being Barbenheimer, split into two parts. So Kodo Cinema proudly presents to you Barbenheimer Part 1. kick off Barbenheimer the the first movie I'm going to talk about is the is Barbie so this will be the Barbie movie I'm going to talk about first and then the next episode will be about Oppenheimer and before I give you my background on on the Barbie film on the Barbie movie and break it down the movie itself let me give you a background on the Barbenheimer on the Barbenheimer phenomenon both Barbie and Oppenheimer began circulating on social media before their July 21st, 2023 theatrical release in theaters in the United States and several other countries. Barbenheimer, well, which is basically is basically a play on words on both movie titles. Instead of being instead of both films being a rivalry, many people decided to watch them both as a double feature and decide which film to watch first. Of course, this includes the memes of both films. One of the memes had Barbie and Oppenheimer shaking hands with Oppenheimer's back burning, a pink mushroom cloud over Barbie land, Barbie and Ken driving behind an explosion, and of course, Barbie and Oppenheimer dancing through the night away in a La La Land movie poster, which is basically turned into a meme. And also, in case you didn't know, uh, Ryan Gosling, who uh, plays Ken, in Barbie was in La La Land with them with Emma Stone. So <laughs> there's that little meme there's that little meme right there. <laughs> so so the cast members of both films responded by encouraging audiences to watch the films on the same day. Celebrity participation in this trend including actor Tom Cruise who purchased tickets to watch both films while his latest movie Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 was scheduled to to be still playing in theaters. Now, now this isn't the first time both uh, films, which I'm referring to Barbie and Oppenheimer, will come out the same day. On July 18th of 2008, The Dark Knight, which is directed by Christopher Nolan, to which Christopher Nolan directs the Oppenheimer movie, it came out the same day as the Mamma Mia movie. Another example will be going into the video game side of things. On March 20th, 2020, Animal Crossing New Horizons and Doom Eternal also came out the same day as well. Now, this whole strategy of like a type of media because TV, film, video games is basically it basically all connects to me- media, and this little strategy is known as counter programming, which is a studio's marketing strategy to distribute a piece of media that appeals to audience demographics not targeted by another piece of media or a non-media event. Now, before I break down this movie, I'm going to give you my uh, background on the Barbie movie. Now, I'll be honest, I 
I mean, I'm familiar with Barbie, but I never grew up with it. I mean, I've heard of it, I've heard of it, but the closest to it was in the Toy Story movies, where uh, Barbie, although being voiced by Jodie Benson, Jodie Benson, who voiced uh, Ariel in Little Mermaid, voiced Barbie in in the in the second and third Toy Story movie. And um, that was my uh, that was my introduction to Barbie to to Barbie, and and that and that's basically it. Also and also Ken as well, and to which uh, Ken was introduced in Toy Story three, be, being voiced by uh, Michael Keaton, in in the third in the third Toy Story movie. So technically, uh, uh, the Toy Story movies introduced me to Barbie and Ken a little bit, but it wasn't until. Uh, but it wasn't until the it wasn't until the move it wasn't until the when the movie the Barbie movie came out this year that's when I started to like put the pieces together like okay what's uh, what's up with Barbie who who is Barbie anyway so that's kind of like where I'm starting to uh, put the pieces together oh and also I mean uh, the Barbie Barbie I mean the uh, even though there was even though now we got a live action Barbie movie there were uh, there were animated movies of Bar of Barbie as well. Most notably from uh, Universal, because uh, Universal uh, did Universal, and of course Mattel, the company that created uh, Barbie, uh, they did uh, they did like they did multiple Barbie animated movies, like uh, Barbie and the Twelve Dancing Princesses. One of them even focused on Barbie and the Nutcracker, including uh, including including a Three Musketeers one as well. They did multiple other Barbie animated movies as well, so that's that's so there's something right there. But of course, the creation of Barbie, as I mentioned, it was it was of course a Mattel was the American toy company that launched the the product. It was launched on March 9th, 1959, and and the person who created Barbie, the person who created Barbie was Ruth Handler, who is an inventor and businesswoman, and she is the creator of Barbie. Now, prior to the launch, Barbie has been Barbie has been an important part of the of the toy fashion doll market for over 6 decades. And, and Mattel has sold over a billion Barbie dolls, making it the company's largest and most profitable line. Of course, the brand itself expanded into a multimedia franchise since the late 1980s including video games, computer animated movies, which, to which I mentioned some some of the some of the uh, uh, Barbie animated movies, most notably that Universal has done, including a live action movie that 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 stars Margot Robbie. Now, aside from Barbie, I also mentioned Ken. Ken is basically uh, Barbie's Barbie's friend. So Ken Ken is from Wills, Wisconsin, and he has a fashionable line of clothing and accessories as well. Although he although Ken made his debut wearing only a swimsuit. And of course, in the Barbie mythos, Ken met Barbie on the set of a TV commercial, and of course, and is, and of course, as I, as I mentioned, is, is basically her boyfriend. Per, per promotional box inscriptions from his debut until 2018. Now, now he is considered to be one of Barbie's main friends, and of course, since his debut, Ken has 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 held over 40 occupations, the latest being beach. Standing in the sand, standing in the sand, and surveying the waves, as depicted in the 2023 Barbie film. So yes, Ken is basically um, at the beach. So he's basically your beach boy, or something, or something like that. <laughs> okay. So anyway, now as for the film, as for the film itself, the production of this film was actually in development for quite for a long time. Since um, well, actually not too long. I mean, but but it did feel like a long time. It was announced back in two thousand nine by Universal Pictures, although the development of the film didn't start until twenty fourteen when Sony Pictures acquired the film rights with Amy Schumer attached to play the title character. However, in twenty seventeen, Amy Schumer left the project, blaming it on scheduling conflicts. But it was revealed. Prior to the release to the release of the Barbie movie in 2023, she left the film due to creative differences with the film's producers. Now I'll get I'll I'll give you a little more detail on that later on. Uh, so basically, after Amy Schumer left the film, Anne Hathaway was also Anne Hathaway was considered was considered for the role of Barbie as well. However, in 2018, 
the rights for Barb for Bar the rights for the Barbie movie as Sony expired and it was transferred over to Warner Brothers, taking over production. In 2019, it was revealed that Margot Robbie will play the role of Barbie. Wonder Woman director Patty Jenkins was was in talks to direct. However, the studio went with Greta Gerwig, and of course, and according to Margot Robbie, she wanted Gal Gadot to to play Barbie. Unfortunately, Gal Gadot was unavailable. So there were some possible casting choices for Barbie. So um, so Margot Robbie wasn't the, wasn't the first choice. He had there there was Amy Schumer, Anne Hathaway, and Gal Gadot. And I will say this, and I will say this. I mean, I wouldn't mind Ash, Anne Hathaway and Gal Gadot. Those, those are some pretty decent choices. Amy Schumer, though, uh, despite her track record of films, I do not know. But with Margot Robbie, Margot Robbie was at, Margot Robbie. She was she she she's actually a very very good choice. I actually I actually like the choice. I actually like Margot Robbie. I I actually like the ch the choice of having Margot Robbie play Barbie, and I th and I think it pays off very well in in this movie. So so also just to um, so also just to go further down, just to go for, just to go further down. Greta Ger Greta Gerwig, uh, Greta Gerwig is a filmmaker who who's basically. Who's basically who's basically uh who basically worked on films such as Lady Bird and Little Women, including her acting roles such as Frances Ha, Isle of Dogs, No Strings Attached, and many other films. She's also nominated for multiple Oscars as well, and of course she also partners she also partners up with Noah Baumbach, Noah Baumbach, who's basically uh the partner to Greta Gerwig on multiple films, and. So so Greta and Noah are are the writers for the Barbie movie. For basically so basically Greta Ger so basically Greta Gerwig and Noah Baumbach serves as the writers for the Barbie movie. Now, uh Greta Gerwig drew inspiration from her past life for this movie, to which uh her mom uh discouraged her from purchasing the the Barbie dolls, although although she eventually allowed her to opting to 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 acknowledge the controversial nature of the Barbie dolls, Gerwig chose to create a film in which she would be both doing the thing and subverting the thing. So so basically doing the thing and subverting the thing in the sense that she would be celebrating the feminism behind Barbie while also knowing the controversial beauty standards associated with it. And, and of course the the feminism is definitely one of the themes that is being played in in the Barbie movie as well, just to let you all know. Um, Gre Greta was also fascinated by the idea that humans create create dolls, which in turn imitate humans, feeling that we're in con we're in constant conversation with inanimate objects, while also conveying an affirmative message to the audience to just be yourself and know that and know that that's enough. The film deliberately deli it, the film deliberately went all over the place with the, with the message, and I will tell you this. Um, when you see, when you, if, for those of you who have seen this movie, for those of you who have seen this movie, and for those of you who have seen this movie, and for those who have not seen the movie, by the way, uh, go off topic a second, second, huge spoiler, huge spoiler alert, because there's a, there's a lot to talk about in this film, so huge spoiler alert. The message for this film is all over the place. Feminism isn't, isn't the only message, there's also, like, message of identity, patriarchy, and matriarchy as well, including other messages. They're they're it's literally all over the place. So like it's literally it's literally everywhere in this film. Like like the message is all over the place, and you couldn't even tell. Like okay, what's the message of this film? That's actually one of my that's actually one of my criticisms of this film. The message of this film is all over the place. So just to let so just to let you know. So so anyways so of course so basically. So part of the part of the part of this film, there's like there's like huge critiques of consumerism, yet glamorizing plastic products, and of course, and of course, the ending of the film, in which Barbie desires to be more than just a plat, more than, in which Barbie desires to be more than a plastic doll. Gerwig made the film as as an and I quote, earnest attempt to make amends with the intention of affirming the worth of women and conveying the 
impossibility of perfection, which some perceive to be standards associated with Barbie. Of course, this is also reflecting upon the maximalism of Barbie. Greta, Greta Gerwig said that the ontology of Barbie was similar to what she perceived as Shakespeare's maximalism, which she had enjoyed in his works. She grounded the film in what she described as a heightened theatric theatricality that allows you to deal with big ideas in the midst of anarchic play. Of course, there were also some other influences as well, most notably of uh, uh, one of her inspirations for this film was actually was also a a poem that is inspired by the Apostles' Creed. And for those of you who are uh, into religion and probably know what the Apostles' Creed is, which is the which is basically which is which is the I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. Who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died, and, and was buried. He descended into hell the third day. He rose again from the dead. He he ascended into heaven, seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. That's the Apostles' Creed. And Gre Greta Gerwig uh, used it as an inspiration for this film, and she even made like a she made a poem inspired by it too. So there's a, there's a couple of inspirations by it. Although it was revealed that that the poem itself, like that Greta Gerwig wrote, which was inspired by the the Apostles' Creed, has yet to be released. the The Apostles' Creed itself. She she still used it as an inspiration for this movie, so so there's something right there. Now, uh, going into the casting side, aside going to the casting portion of this film, as I mentioned, uh, Margot Robbie uh, plays Barbie, the main Barbie, or should I say, stereotypical Barbie, and of course this also includes Ryan Gosling, Simu Liu, Isa Rae, Alexander Ship, Emma Mackey, Kate McKinnon who was a roommate of Greta Gerwig at Columbia University in New York, Dua Lipa, Scott Evans, and many other cast members. Now, Ryan Gosling, who took the role of Ken, he actually took the role for one reason, and and the reason why is because Ryan Gosling walked into the backyard of his home and found a Ken doll face down in the mud next to a squished lemon. And... He texted the photo to Greta Gerwig and said, I shall be your Ken, for this story must be told. So there's your reason right there. And of course, there's also another reason. According to Greta Gerwig herself, she says she believes Gosling has succeeded as Ken because he is, he is a, and I quote, secretly a comedic actor. With his comedy stems from how seriously he takes his acting, she told Rolling Stone that the discussions about Ken were, and I quote, as in depth character works as I ever done with anyone about anything. Of course, going to the behind the scenes with the costumes and set design, Sarah Greenwood and Kate E. Spencer serve as set designers and decorator, respectively, on the film for the Barbie Dream House. And of course, uh, inspiration inspiration was drawn from the mid century modernist architecture found in Palm found in Palm Springs, including the Kauf, including the Kaufman Desert House by by Richard Neutra, as well as the photography of Slim Aarons. Greta Gerwig wanted to capture, and I quote, what was so ridiculously fun about the Dreamhouse, alluding to its previous models in reference to Pee Wee's Big Adventure, the paintings, of course, you also got uh, wonderful paintings, which actually, which actually featured in, uh, which actually features, featured in the 1951 Technicolor musical of American Paris that starred Gene Kelly. And of course, the film itself was used with practical effects. Although most of the film was done with practical effects, although uh, there there was probably a, a little bit of CGI in it for some parts, but for the most part, it was mostly practical. Now, um, of course, your costume designer Jacqueline Duran, who previously collaborated with Greta Gerwig on Little Women, employed a practical approach to create Barbie's world, wardrobe. Of course, uh, the defining characteristic of what she wears is, is where she's going and what she's doing. 
It's about being completely dressed for your job or task. To match the film's Barbie Land setting, Duran and her team created costumes made of roughly 15 color combinations that rife that rived off the idea of a French Rivera beach in the early 1960s and drew inspiration from actress Bridgette Bardot for Ken's outfits. Duran zeroed in a look composed of colorful sportswear from the 1980s while actor Ryan Gosling suggested a Ken branded, brand, brand, branded underwear for the character. Of course, Duran closely adapted outfits from past iterations of Barbie dolls, such, such as the 1993 Western Stampin' Dolls and the 1994 Hot Skating Dolls. Of course, you, know, you also get the skates in this film as well. Or the Roller, boy, roller Boys, I should say. Roller Boys or ro Roller Skates, I should say. Yeah. So, so yeah. She, no she even noted that the Barbie dolls as a very useful way to look at different ideas of femininity and what that means, who owns it, and who's it aimed at, and reflected this idea in how she dressed the characters, while the majority of the clothing featured in the film were sourced by Duran and her team. And her team. They also pulled pieces from the fashion archives of Chanel. Now I'm also going to go break down the movie. Also to mention, um, um, uh, the Barbie movie does not feature the original uh, Barbie girl theme, which was, which is basically, I, I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world. That theme song, that is not in the movie. The original theme song is not in the Barbie movie, which is, which is, which is real, really sad. But I think the probably the one of the main reasons why I think it could be, it could be a rights issue between this between. Uh, Mattel and one of the record companies who wrote who who wrote the song. Of course, uh, it was Aqua. It was the singer Aqua who uh, who ca who came up with the song and then was record and it was recorded at one of her studios. So I guess it's more of a recording. So I guess it was a rights issue between the recording studio and the, and the film studio itself. So I'm pretty sure that was a a rights issue between those two. So any but a new rendition of the song is uh, is made for the film too. So just to let you all know. So I guess it's not all that bad. I guess. So you gotta hear a little snippet snippet of the Barbie girl theme I, in in this movie. Although this is more on a new version of it. So anyway, so anyways, so anyway, what's the, it's time to go into a bar. So it's time. To, so it's time to go into a Barbie world. So strap yourselves in. For so strap yourself in. This is this is Barbenheimer Part One, Barbie. So the film opens up by parodying the opening sequence to 2001: A Space Odyssey, which depicts the introduction of the Black Monolith, where where hominins learn how to use a bone as a weapon with music from Richard Strauss playing in the background. It, and of course, if you don't know what the, the music from 2001: A Space Odyssey is that Richard Strauss did, is basic. It's basically the theme song. Da 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 ba ba bum 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 bum. That's the uh, theme from 2001: A Space Odyssey, which was directed by Stanley Kubrick, came and it came out in the late 60s. Just to let you all know. Just to let you all know. Now, of course, this time around, instead of the hominins, it, instead of the hominins, we get to see uh, little girls playing with baby dolls when they discover a giant Barbie doll wearing a black and white, um, which actually looks with a black and white, um, black black and white zebra striped uh, swimsuit, and uh, of course, and of course, this is referencing to uh, Barbie's debut in 1959, where Barbie. Was wearing a where it was wearing a black and white zebra striped uh, sw swimsuit, and that was like that was her uh that was her debut, that that was like her date that was her debut de debut um uh, that was that, that was her debut, and she was wearing that sw she was wearing that 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 zebra striped swimsuit in 1959 as her uh as as her debut. Now of course um. What what follows is Helen Marin. Helen Marin narrates the opening of the film, um, basically describing you know since the beginning of time, since the beginning of time, 
since the first little girl. They, they, there were uh, dolls, baby dolls. That's what, how she's opening the film up. And of course, uh, you get the whole reference to 2001, where uh, the little girl, little girls see the bar, see the, the very first Barbie doll standing in the standing in the standing in the middle with the 2001 Space Odyssey theme playing in the background because uh, in, this time around the first Barbie doll serves as the the monolith the monolith of the of this wor of this world so of course uh, of course uh, with that being said after seeing the after the little girls all see it this resulted in the little girls tossing the baby dolls aside and of course one of them was being thrown up into the air being smashed into pieces and uh, and uh, of course uh, all the all the all the little girls started start to embrace the Barbie dolls. And as I mentioned, Hello Marin narrates the opening of the film. And of course, I, when I saw this in theaters, and of course I saw the first uh, trailer as well, I I was like, I'm pretty sure Hello Marin did this just to get a paycheck. I mean, of course she <laughs> she appeared. Of uh, I mean, of course she appeared in another Warner Brothers movie, uh, Shazam: Fury of the Gods. Which was, which is another another film from Warner Brothers that came out in 2023. Although that one did not do pretty well at the box office. That that one did not do pretty well <laughs> with uh, with with critics with critics and of course the box office. Oh, while I'm at while I'm at oh by the way while I'm at it, uh, the Barbie movie d got good reviews. The Bar Barbie movie got good reviews and it made over a billion dollars. So so yes, this movie made money. Just go off topic for a little bit. Okay, so anyway, um, going back to the break, going back to the breakdown, uh, stereotypical, stereotypical Barbie, which is being played by Margot Robbie, and yes, that is her name, stereotypical Barbie. She and a wide range of fellow Barbies all reside in Barbie Land, a ma matriarchal, a matriarchal society where women are self-confident, self-sufficient, and successful. So basically, uh, Barb in the Barbie land, you get the Barbies taking over the land. So this is basically matriarchy, um, of the Barbie land. So basically, uh, you get the so you do, so you get the whole idea that uh, in the Barbie land and Barbie land, you the Barbies are basically anything. Like a Barbie can be a journalist, a president, a doctor, a doctor, a lawyer, anything in Barbie land. And I will say this: the Barbie Land, the the set design for Barbie Land, and the whole world itself, the visuals itself, they were spot on. It feels like you are, you are. It feels like you're, you're in an actual Barbie Land, basically in a, an actual place, an an actual Barbie play set, and is lit, and is all pink, and and it's literally, and it's amazing. Like props to the set designers, the. Props to the production team. They they literally, they literally, they did a fantastic job with that, with the with the production with the production of his, of the film itself. Even the costumes themselves look pretty. Even the costume itself. Even the costumes for uh the bar for the for bar for the Barbie Barbie variants and Ken variants are pretty good too. So I'll give the film that. So anyway, so anyway, um, so anyway, just just move forward. Uh, the you also get you also have the Ken counterparts who spend their days engaging in recreational activities at the beach, and of course the main Ken is being played by none other than Ryan Gosling, as I mentioned. So anyway, the Barbies as the Barbies hold different positions, as I mentioned, one of being a doctor, lawyer, politician, even journalist as well. Beach Ken is only happy when he is with Barbie and seeks a closer relationship, but Barbie rebuffs him in favor of independence and female friendships. So, in case you're probably wondering, yes, there uh, Barbie and Ken do have a, like a love relationship thing when it first when um in in later year when later in later years, but of course in this movie this love this relationship I mean Ken tries to start a relationship but of course Barbie rebuff, rebuffs him. So at so going back to the beach. Beach Ken, Kip, yes, that is that is his actual name, Beach Ken, but I call him Ken. He was about to go up against Taurus Ken. He's he's being played by Simu Lu. Simu Lu, for those of you who for those of you who don't know, Simu Lu plays Shang Chi, 
in the in the Shane Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings film, and they're about to get into a fight. Unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, Barbie breaks up, breaks breaks up the fight, and she's like, "No, no, 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 no! We're not gonna fight each. Let's not fight each other." Beach Ken tries to go surfing. Unfortunately, he gets wiped out by a plastic wave, but later gets help from Doctor Barbie. Of course, uh, Doctor Barbie is being played by Harvey Neff who is a transgender woman, and is an actress, by the way. And of course, um, you also got uh, Physicist Barbie, who's being played by Emma Mackey, and who looks who looks like Margot Robbie. <laughs> uh, no joke. I mean, there's definitely a few actors who look alike, and of course, Emma Mackey and Margot Robbie do look alike. You also have Ryder Barbie being played by Alexander Shipp, who plays Storm in X-Men Apocalypse. Law Lawyer Barbie being played by Sharon Rooney, who who was in live act who was in the live action remake of Dumbo. And of course you got Judge Barbie being played by Anna Cruz Kane, who collaborated with who collaborated with Greta Gerwig and Little Women. And of course, you have Dual Lipa as Mermaid Barbies. Well, I guess her name says it all in a in a dual role for three. <laughs> Get it because do a role for three because there are three Mermaid Barbies. <laughs> Being played by the same actress, and of course, as for the Kens, of course, as for the Kens, you got uh, as I meant, as I mentioned, as I said before, I'll say it again. You got Ryan Gosling and Simu Wu as as Kens, as well, including Scott Atkins, who is basically stereotypical Ken. To which, why do we have a stereotypical Barbie being 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 the lead instead of instead? Why why is it there a stereotypical Bar? Why why isn't Ryan Gosling? stereotypical Ken. Like, I know he's Beach Ken, but wouldn't he be a stereotypical Ken? I mean, I'm just saying, why is that? I mean, oh, well, well, I mean, I, I mean, well, well, I mean, well, I mean, well, whatever. So anyway, moving forward, we would get a, we would get more Barbie variants and Ken variants, including, uh, other appearance, including other, um, uh, bar, including other, uh, including other characters as well from the world of Barbie. We would get um, Midge, who's being played by Emerald Fennell, who is marketed as Barbie's best friend. And, uh, and of course, um, Midge. Midge is basically the pregnant, uh, the pre pregnant Barbie doll. And it was actually, and it, and it was actually, it was actually mentioned, and Helen Mara mentioned this, like, that the, that the Midge doll, that the Midge Barbie doll was a controversial sale because uh, Midge was pregnant, and uh, many pe and many people uh were many people got got worried that this this would promote teenage pregnancy. So there's there there's a controversial there's one there so there's one of those controversial facts right there. And then of course uh Alan, who is Ken's best friend, is being played by Michael Sarah. By the way, uh, Alan and Midge do have a bit of a relationship too. Well, not in this movie, but in the world of Barbie, it, it does happen. Now, of course, um, now, now, of course, this goes into a dance party during a dance party to which, after, to which Barbie, this is basically after when Barbie rebuffs uh, Ken's relationship. Barbie is suddenly stricken with worries about mortality. This, this of course, gets Barbie to say, "Do you guys ever think about dying?" This line. This this line, uh, although this line not said from Margot Robbie, this line, although the the line that Margot Robbie actually mentioned, but it was Greta, but it was, although Margot Robbie says this line, but it was but it was Greta Gerwig who came up with that line, for Margot Robbie to say. Greta Gerwig described the line as the film as being an anarchic, unhinged, and humanist, and she felt that the film originated from the deep isolation of the pandemic. Well, I guess there's a well. I guess well, there's your reason right there. Opin opinion that the line in which Margot Robbie says, "Do you guys ever think about dying?" is up finds the film's anarchic nature. So, so there's there's a reason right there. Now, the next day, she finds out she can no longer complete her usual routine. Discovers her feet have gone flat, and she has cellulite. Okay, oh, so also I forgot to mention, and at the opening of the film, like. Barbie does his usual routine where she go, she wakes up, she wakes up, tries on a dress, uh, comes down from, floats down from the top of her dream, from her dream house, 
like like she literally flo- floats down as it was as it was magic but of course uh but of course but it was but of course this is basically uh uh, but of course, you know, who, for those who pl- grew up playing with the Bar- Barbie dolls, uh, you probably know, like, this is like somebody playing with the actual Barbie doll. So, like, as she was pulling on, this is basically like someone, ha- this is like basically a young girl holding the Barbie doll and comes down from the treehouse as she was holding it. Although, although this was, d- although I'm pretty sure this was done by using, uh, by using, a, I'm pretty sure this was done by using a little bit of visual effects and, 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 a, and a string, and a string attached to it. Just to have, just to have uh, Barbara Raleigh float down. Now, of course, uh, Bar Bar the Barbie stereotypical Barbie shows it to all the other Barbie variants, and they all freak out. So then, so then stereotypical Barbie go goes to weird Barbie, who's being played by Kate McKinnon, and as I mentioned, Kate McKinnon was Greta Gerwig's uh, roommate in college. Now, weird Barbie is a wise, disfigured outcast. And 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 we and Weird Barbie tells her that to cure her affliction, she must travel into the real world and find the child playing with her. So so of course you're probably wondering, okay, who's the child? Who's this child? Well, 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 I'll get to that pretty soon. So Weird Bar now before so Weird Barbie shows stereotypical Barbie two different shoe choices. One of them is a high heel, and the other a sandal. Weird Barbie says with the sandal, you can go to the real world to know the truth. And and of course with the high heel, or you could go back to your normal life, the choice is yours. Stereotypical Barbie goes with the high heel at first, but but the weird Barbie goes but the weird Barbie but the weird Barbie wants wants to wants wants stereotypical Barbie to go with the sandal. This is basically this is a this is basically a reference to the pill scene from the Matrix, where Morpheus gives Neo a choice between two pills. The red pill, stay in Wonderland and I'll show you the ropes. The blue pill, go back to your normal life. The choice is yours. And of course, and of course we all know that Neo went with the red pill, but you get the reference. Of course the scene alone of course the scene alone between there there was there was a little bit of controversy between during the scene between uh stereotypical Barbie and Rear Barbie. Um, during the scene, there is a there is a map in the background, what looked to be an alleged appearance of the Nine Dash Line, a mar- maritime border running through the south, running through the South China Sea, set and claimed by the government of the People's Republic of China. In the film, in the in the film began when Vietnam's Phil censorship authority banned the film in Vietnam for allegedly displaying such lines. With the rising concerns over the alleged appearance of the Nine Dash Line, several media outlets pointed to a drawing of a world map. So you see a world map in the background during that scene between Barbie and Weird Barbie. Like you see that world map, and 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 of course it was banned. And of course, and of course it's basically the, it's basically the world, which is basically the world. And of course you see, there is an appear, the alleged appearance of the Nine Dash Line. And of course media outlets. Literally pointed pointed out the drawing of the map, which is which also appeared in the film's trailer. And of course, several new media outlets. One example, the Los Angeles Times described the particular image as a map of the real world, which looks as if it's been drawn in crayon by a child with a line of dashes alongside the coast of what should be China. Of course, I'm pretty sure. I'm of course that's probably the. In my opinion, of course, in my opinion, I think that's the best description because if you really think about it, it really does. The map itself, and of course, that map is in the background of during that scene, and of course, it really does look. It really does. It really looks like a a kid drew that map with crit with with a with a crayon. So I guess uh, I guess so. Um, so I'm pretty sure that's like the best description to say. Of course, on July sixth of twenty twenty three, Warner Brothers issued a statement explaining that the map in the in the concerned image is a childlike crayon drawing with the dashed lines depicting Barbie's journey from Barbie Land to the real world. It was not intended to make any type of statement. So for that portion, it wasn't. It was not intended, but still, um, it was still banned in Vietnam for that for that reason. So there's that there's that controversy right there. Now, now, of course, um, going back to the movie, Barbie leaves Barbie Land. She says she says goodbye to all the other Barbie variants, 
Of course, she drives her car, her Barbie car, or the Barbie mobile. And as she is driving, as she's driving, she discovers that Ken has stole away in her convertible and reluctantly allows him to join her. I mean, at first, Barbie's, Barbie, Barbie, Barbie is like, Ken, what are you doing here? And then, Ken, and then Ken's like, I'm coming, I'm coming with you. I even brought my roller skates or rollerblades. I'm pretty sure it's ro rollerblades, but, but, but eh, just roll with it. So both Barbie and Ken travel to the real world and pass through different, uh, different locations like flower fields, lakes, space, lakes, space and time, and of course you also see different, um, vehicle. You also see different uh, Barbie vehicles like a Barbie rocket ship, a bar Barbie rocket ship, Barbie bikes, bar a Barbie boat, uh, and of course a Barbie RV. Wow. Wow, Bar wow, Barbie really has a lot. Oh, wow, Barbie really has a lot of vehicles in her in 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 her world. So that's pretty good. And I like the different backgrounds too. Like all the backgrounds, like this is not CGI nor green screen. Those are actual. Those are actual uh, actual backgrounds that, are, that were made during production. Those those are like actual made backgrounds that that were made during production. Well, they're not real life locations, but but of course, it's basically there's like a like a little background, like a backstage background that they create, and this was used during during those sequence, those, during those during those transitions. So those are real backgrounds of of the flower fields, the lakes, even oceans, and of course space as well. Those are actual stage backgrounds, including and, and a little bit of drawings too. So 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 that's actually pretty cool. So then, of course, uh, Barbie and Ken both arrive at Venice Beach, and and they look around and they look around and see all the real life people, the real people in the real world. Now, of course, the two get, get although the, the two ran into multiple antics. One of the antics is Ken and Barbie getting arrested twice, and that's one of the, and the, that's one of the few moments that made me laugh because because Ken and Barbie arrive in the real world they get arrested the first time around was when barbie punches a guy punches a guy who uh who slap who slaps her from behind she punches him in the face and then the next and then it cuts to barbie and ken getting a mug shot <laughs> getting a mug shot and then ken was just ken was like oh pizza time yay he holds up he holds up this sign holds up this sign like as he as he was getting an actual picture, he smiles and Barbie is just all in, and Barbie herself is in disgust, realizing like, what is this? It's just so funny. Of course, this happens again after Barbie and Ken were trying to uh, trying to uh, were, were getting old Western outfits, you know, um, old Western costumes, you know, from the from the Wild Wild West, if you know what I'm saying. Of course, they don't they don't have the money. And they get arrested again. Wow, they really wow. They and they got bailed out twice. So it's kind of funny. Wow, and I, I either that or Bar or, Bar or Barbie or Ken are rich. I don't know. I don't know what to say. Wait a minute. If they're rich, wait a minute. Wait a minute. They're not rich. They don't have money. So how? how they don't have money. They don't have money. Which probably explains why they stole they stole those outfits. Which probably explains why they stole those old Western outfits. So anyway, moving so anyway, moving forward, um, Barbie tracks down her owner. So anyway, Bar so anyway, uh, Bar so anyway, um, uh, so anyway, uh, the whole attention to Barbie and Ken entering the real world alarms the Mattel CEO, who's being played by Will Ferrell, who orders their capture. So basically, Will Ferrell plays the CEO of Mattel, and I will say this: as interesting as Will Ferrell was in this movie, he's just basically Will Ferrell. He's basically Will Ferrell, like Will Ferrell doing his usual Will Ferrell thing, like, like as he was saying, "This Barbie doll is gonna make it catastrophic," like, like yeah, and you kind of forget, and you kind of forget that he's in this movie too. Like, you forget that Will Ferrell is in this movie, even though he is in this movie, but you forget. Of course, he tries to put Barbie back in the box, back in the box. 
And what I mean by box, I'm talking about the Barbie box. You know, the Barbie bo Barbie box, you know, from the store, from like the store, if you know what I'm saying. So later on, Barbie tracks down her owner, which is basically a tween girl named Sasha, named Sasha, who's being played by Ariana Greenblatt. By the way, fun fact, um, uh, Ariana Greenblatt played, uh, young, Gr played young Gamora in Avengers Infinity War. And that movie made two billion dollars. The Barbie movie made over a billion dollars. So this is her second big blockbuster role where 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 she she appeared in a film in a blockbuster film where it made a billion dollars. So she's got two blockbuster movies that made a billion dollars under her belt. And that's saying something too. So anyway so anyway, um Barbie sees um Sasha who criticized her for encouraging unrealistic beauty standards and calls Barbie a fascist. I'm not kidding. Sasha call Sasha calls Barbie a fascist. I'm not even making this up. Like she she literally calls Barbie a fascist. And this gets Barbie this gets Barbie all this this gets Barbie and this upsets Barbie. And of course Barbie defends herself by saying I don't control railways or commerce, but that doesn't make me a fascist. Now, for the record, Barbie is now for the record. Now, for the record, I'm just gonna say it now. I'm just gonna say this, girl, Sasha, you don't even know what fascist is. Like, I'm pretty sure you don't even know where that came from. I'm just saying, you probably don't even know what a fa what what. I, I'm pretty sure you don't know what a fascist is. Now, just given the Get, just to give into some context on this whole uh, fascist line that uh, Sasha said, um, Greta, Gerwig, uh, Greta Gerwig wanted to address the societal, criti societal criticisms of Barbie directly in the film, and in fact, uh, like she, the reason why like she did that, like the reason why Greta Gerwig uh, had that line in the movies was to address the societal criticisms of Barbie directly in the film. So technically, you get something like the like so so like something like the stuff that is being referenced in the film, you know, like some of the other messages, like you know, like as I mentioned, the matriarchy, patriarchy, feminism. So like some of the some of the stuff that hap that, that that appears in this film, and of course, yes, some of it is definitely some of the woke elements that are being put into this movie. So, and of course, part of this movie is definitely a commentary on this whole issue so there's some huge so there's a huge so this is there's some meta commentary in this movie on on all this um uh, on all this stuff so like feminism like feminism uh page in the patriarchy so so that's one of the reasons why greta gerwig put that line put that's probably one of the reasons why greta gerwig wanted to address the societal criticisms of barbie directly in the movie which which probably explains why the fascist line was thrown into the movie. Now Barbie, who is upset and distraught, she goes by the by. She's at this bus at this bus stop. She sits there. She closes her eyes, and, and then she gets. And then she's sitting. She sits next to this elderly woman, and and this is one of those moments where it was. It's, it's a pretty good moment. Like like she's trying to think. Like what am I? Who am I? What 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 am I like? What what am I like between both worlds? Who am I between both worlds? And this is actually one of the few good moments in this movie where Barbie Bargo Robbie like sits at the station. She closes her eyes and tries to imagine for for a sec. And this is no this is without any this is and there's no dialogue in this in this moment. And then of course you get the old lady as well, and that's another cute moment as well, as if she as if. As if as she was looking at her future self, which is actually something too. And this is something now. This is just my point of view, and and I just and I just realized something. Like this old lady does not come back for the rest of the film. We only see her in one scene. So I'm just wondering, is that Barbie as an old woman? Is that an old woman Barbie, or or is it just a regular old woman? I mean. What is the point of that? I mean, the scene itself where Bar where stereotypical Barbie is at the bus station, and um, 
and she and and she's she has her eyes closed sitting next to this old woman and and they both look at each other like like what is up with that scene it is a pretty good scene but it also leaves you questioning who is that woman who is that old woman like what who what's the point of having that old woman there is she um is she the is she the is she the bar is she the Barbie in the real world where she is old now? I mean, or is it someone else? Who is she? I don't really know, and that's something that I realized. I think that's left for the and I believe that is left for the audience to decide. Like I I don't really I mean to be honest that's that's my that's my thought that's my point of view what I think I mean I'm pretty sure that other people will have uh, different point of views of that scene as well. So um that's just um that's just so that's just that's just my uh, thought on that. So moving for so moving forward um so so mo moving forward um uh Barbie discovers uh Gloria who who's being played by America Ferrera and Gloria is is an employee at Mattel and of course Sasha's mother and she she is the catalyst of her existential crisis. Gloria had begun to play with Sasha's old Barbie toys while experiencing her own identity crisis, inadvertently transferring her concerns to Barbie. One of the, one of the Barbies was obviously Weird Barbie. Gloria made Weird Barbie by playing too hard, making her do splits, and of course, uh, this was also dropped by Kate McKinnon herself. Like Kate McKinnon even says, "Hi, I'm Weird Barbie, and I smell and." I mean, I, I, you know, I do splits, and I'm pretty sure you made me. And of course, I smell like I smell like a basement. Literally, she see she says that she smells like a basement. I'm pretty sure that weird Barbie. I'm pretty sure that weird Barbie was in the basement of Gloria of Gloria's house, probably. So Mattel attempts to put Barbie in a toy box for re, for remanufacturing, but she escapes and finds a room where she meets a woman who's being played by Rhea Perlman. And of course, the two have a conversation. And by the way, th th this woman also comes back at the end of the movie. By the way, and of course, this is this was more of a bit of a distraction for all the Mattel Mattel employees, and they're all male. All the all the Mattel all the Mattel employees up on the top of the first floor, up on the top of up on the top, who works for Will Ferrell's character, Will Ferrell as the main CEO. They're all male. So all the male, so basically the all the so basically the CEO of Mattel has like a all an all male crew on the on the on the very top of the Mattel, of Mattel who are trying to get who are trying to catch a Barbie, put her back in the box. Of course, um, Barbie hides with Rhea Perlman for a while, and, to, and of course she escapes through that wall, catches up to Gloria and Sasha for help, and the three travel to who. Guess what? They travel to Barbie Land with the Mattel, with the Mattel CEO and high-ranking executives in pursuit. Okay, there we go. Executives. They're all there's they're so the CEO of Mattel in this movie has an all-male executive crew. That's that's who that's who they put that's who they are. The the all-male executives and the Mattel CEO have like this huge office and conference room all the way at the top of the Mattel Tower. And of course, this is in, um, of course, in California, since Venice Beach is in California as well. So anyway, uh, of course, uh, Ken even explores, uh, uh, explores a little bit in the real world and realizes and learns about the patriarchal system, and feels respected and accepted for the first time. So, so by by and by that he sees men riding horses, male construction workers, different books about how the real world is run by men. And of course, seeing a picture of Mount Rushmore, which is basically all the pres, basically the four presidents. And of course, this, and of course, there, there is basically a visual represent. Of course, there's a bit of a visual res representation of masculinity. So Ken, this gives Ken the idea to, you know, start his own, <laughs> own patriarchy. So Ken returns to Barbie Land and persuades the other Kens to take over. And the Barbies are indoctrinated into submissive roles such as maids, housewives, and agreeable girlfriends. So, in case you're wondering, um, from my point of view, this is basically a reference to Back to the Future Part 2. 
because in Back to the Future Part 2, where Marty McFly buys uh, the sports almanac, B uh, old Biff, old Biff, or future Biff, takes the almanac, almanac, goes back in time, gives it to young Biff, just and just so he could be this successful businessman that he is. Of course, changing the timeline. So this is basically this is basically a reference to uh, Back to the Future Part Two. Instead of time travel, this is basically um, how do I describe this? This is basically changing the the law in Barbie Land, where instead of all instead of the Barbies ruling Barbie Land. It's Ken's ru ruling Barbie Land, but this time it's called Ken Land. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Yes, Barbie Land to Ken Land. Wow. So anyway, <laughs> so yeah, there's a bit of a Back to the Future reference to that. Instead of being time travel, this is basically you know Ken Land telling all the other Kens like. Hey guys, I just found out about the whole patriarchy in the real world. Let's bring that to our to our world. Let's bring that to the Barbie land. That way the men can rule. Yay! Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. There's so much going on in this movie. It's so crazy. And that's one thing about this movie. The Barbie movie is crazy. It's so crazy. It's all over the place with the whole messaging. So anyway, um... Uh, so anyway, anyway, uh, so anyway, uh, Barbie, Sasha, and Gloria uh, enter Barbie Land. Now turn into Ken Land. They see the three see a Mount Rushmore with four horses, which which basically which was supposed to be originally four Barbies, or which is basically Bar Mount Barbie Mount Barbie Moore. Was it Mount Barbie Moore in Barbie Land? Now it's uh. Now it's the four horses for Kenland. I don't know. Uh, probably there's male construction workers. Ken's getting actual jobs at the beach. A John Cena Ken who is a merman. Yes, John Cena is in this movie and he plays a merman Ken. Yes, John Cena is a merman in the Barbie movie. Of course, uh. This was provided by Margot Robbie because Margot Robbie and John Cena worked on the Suicide Squad movie together when it came out in 2021. So there's a little something right there. So so and, and so Barbie goes back to her uh, dream house, which is turned into Ken's um, man cave, I guess. <laughs> and Barbie tries to convince Ken, who looks like William Zapka, Johnny Lawrence for Cobra Kai, although the filmmakers made him look like Sylvester Stallone. While wearing a white fur coat, so she tries to she tries to she tries to tell the Barbies she tries to tell the Barbies so like look let's not do this can we go back to the way things were back in Barbie Land but of course uh, she gets rebuffed so she gets rebuffed by not only the Barbies but Ken yes she gets rebuffed by everybody in this in 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 this scene so Barbie becomes depressed and ends up laying on the ground like a plastic doll. And there's even a cliche Mattel commercial of the new depressed Barbie where where and I will say this, hey there kids, guess what? Mattel, Mattel's got a new Barbie doll. Introducing the newly depressed Barbie, where she wears sweatpants all day and night. Watch Pride and Prejudice for the seventh time on BBC. Eat eating a bag of Starburst, going on Instagram for seven hours watching her estranged best friend's wedding photos, and then cries herself, and then cries herself to sleep. <laughs> oh my goodness. Like I said, there's so much going on in this movie. Like, like they had to put in a Mattel commercial of this. Also to add, also to add, they even meant they even announced a Ken movie as well as an in joke. Yes, there's an actual Ken. There's going to be a Ken movie. There's there's going to be a Ken movie beating out a Barbie movie. Actually, now that I think about that. I mean, I wonder. I wonder what I. Uh, I, I I hope there's. I hope. I hope there will be a Ken movie. I mean, we got a Barbie movie. How about a Ken movie? I wonder how that movie's going to work. But still. 
It's pretty funny. The commercial is so funny. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, okay, uh, moving on. Glory and Sasha are about to leave Barbie Land to go back to the real world. Sasha and her mom. So, so, so but the two, but, but Sasha and her mom, but Sasha and her mom realize they should go back to cheer Barbie up, only to be stopped by a bunch of male construction workers. And of course, Alan shows up and beats up all the construction workers. Wow, I gotta say this, Alan's a good fighter. There should be a spinoff for Alan as well, where Alan is a fighter. That should be an actual spinoff right there. So, and, so anyway, Alan, Gloria, and Sasha turn back and turn back, and the three end up at Weir Barbie's house, where stereotypical Barbie feels depressed, plastic, and ugly. And and oh, by the way, Weir Barbie's got a dog as well. One of the, Weir Barbie's got a dog. I'm pretty sure that's one. That's pretty. I'm pretty sure that's one of the uh, Barbie's pet dogs as well. But it turns out to be Weird Barbie. It turns out to be Weird Barbie's uh, pet dog, I guess. In, in this in this movie. In in this movie. But anyway, any, but anyway, uh, we also get a quick narration from Helen Marin, who comes out of nowhere and name drops Margot Robbie, and I and she says. Note to the viewer, Margot Robbie was not the first choice to play Ugly Barbie. Okay, this quote alone, I I laughed at this quote. This got this got me to laugh. And the reason why, because um this is an this is basically a jab at well not just Margot Robbie, but also Amy Schumer. And the reason why, because Amy, it was revealed that Amy Schumer left the film due to creative differences with the producer. It was also revealed that Amy Schumer's version of Barbie was going to be very, very different from what we got. Where this time Amy Schumer's Barbie was gonna be was going to be a an inventor. So an inventor Barbie who makes um who makes high heels out of jello, according to some according to sources. But she also but of course, um but of course she was going to be a Barbie who was an outcast, an ugly Barbie, not the main Barbie. An ugly Barbie, who is an outcast and and a pretty good inventor, or 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 so I, or or so they say she she is, or so they say she is. But of course, uh, so uh, of course it was revealed that that plot line was, and of course it was revealed, but it was revealed that it wasn't gonna work. And you know, and to be fair, I could definitely see why. Um, uh, I could definitely see why Amy Schumer was not involved with this movie, like. I don't think it was gonna work. I don't think Amy Schumer was gonna be a good choice for for Barbie. Of course, I don't think her writing was gonna be good for the bar for that Barbie movie where she where she was gonna be an inventor making Jello high heels. And of course, as I mentioned, knowing the fact that that being an inventor, being an inventor is good for 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 Barbie, but but of course, the whole idea where where she was trying, where she was, um, she, the whole idea of making jump, making, uh, high heel, high heels out of jello, that's not gonna work. I don't think that's gonna be, that's not gonna be able to work. I could definitely see why, um, I could definitely see why she was not involved, she left the, I could definitely see why she left the film, and I believe that was a good choice. That was a good choice. Still, that being said, yes, you do, that is basically a jab at Amy Schumer, that whole, um, the, that whole joke that uh, that whole quote that uh, Helen Marin said in that movie, and that was that, that got me got me got me to laugh. So of course, uh, Gloria gives an inspirational speech about society's conflicting expectations of women, restoring Barbie's self confidence. So with the assistance of assistance of Sasha, Weird Barbie, Alan, and other discontinued dolls, Gloria uses her messages on all the Barbies to bring them out of their sub subordinate behaviors the restored barbies then manipulate the kens to fight amongst themselves and be distracted from alter altering the constitution to enshrine male superiority while the barbies regain their positions of power so how do they do that how do the barbies do that have all the barbie variants hang out on the beach with all the ken variants followed by barbies flirting with the other kens leading into a all-out war 
in a musical number written by Mark Ronson and Andrew Wyatt, who wrote this, who wrote this, who wrote, who wrote the song for Ken, for Ken called "I'm Just Ken." Yes, Ken gets a musical number called "I'm Just Ken," and of course, for those of you, and, and of course, uh, Mark Ronson and Andrew Wyatt, they both wrote the song "Shallow" alongside Lady Gaga for a Star Is Born, which won the Academy Award for Best Original Song in A Star Is Born that came out in 2018. And of course, Ryan Gosling sings the musical number I'm Just Ken with killer vocals. Now, the little bit of history behind that song, Ronson recorded a demo of I'm Just Ken and sent it to director Greta Gerwig. Although he wasn't expecting it to be included, although he wasn't expecting the song to appear in the film, Greta Gerwig loved the song and played it for Ryan Gosling, who plays Ken. Gosling stated that it affected him deeply and asked if he could perform it in the film. Greta had to rewrite an important scene in the film to accommodate the new edition. This also includes Rossin's colleague and fellow producer of the soundtrack, Andrew Wyatt, who wrote the rest of the song before Rossin flew to London to record the vocals with Gosling. Also, the track itself was sent to Guns N' Roses guitarist Slash, who found it cool and agreed to play guitar on the song. Wolf Wolfgang von Van, Wolfgang, Wolf, Wolfgang von Halen and Josh Fries of Foo Fighters also played on the track. So there's some talent behind that song. And the song itself, I will say this. I love the song. I'm just Ken. The song itself is so good. Oh my goodness. Ryan Gosling literally pulls out a good musical number. His vocal, his vocals for that song, spot on. And, oh my goodness. And I will say this, even though he does look like a little bit like Johnny Lawrence, Rocky Balboa, and of course, a bit of Freddie Prince Jr. in that movie, Ryan Gosling was a good choice for Ken. And in my opinion, he carries this movie. Not, not, during, not just the musical number, but for other scenes as well. Because Ryan Gosling literally... Got me to laugh as well, got me to laugh as well during a lot of his scenes, and of course with the with the musical number, it adds another layer to how how amazing Ryan Gosling is. Like I could definitely see a good music career for Ryan Gosling. He's definitely he's definitely got the the he's definitely got the got the got the chops the the vocal the he's definitely got the singing chops for it. Like. It's so good. Like, the song itself is so good. I'm pretty sure, like, it's just basically saying, like, I just can anywhere else, and so am I. Basically, because all the other Kens are coming, they're fighting, and this musical number is playing in the background. And then this leads up to, like, a pink and blue backstage background. All the Kens, all dressed in black. Black shirts, shoes, pants. They all sing. They all sing this song, realizing like, like yeah, I'm we're we're just Ken, we're just Ken. This is more of a of an identity of who they of who they are, like who they of like who are like who are we? Who are we? And I think that's a pretty good fit. That's a pretty good song. Realize like who are you? Even though you may be Ken, you could be something. So there's a bit of an identity theme to it as well. So. After the song, all the Kens rode on their Monty Python horses <laughs> to Ken's place, realizing, or Ken's man cave, realizing that his place is turned back into Barbie's dream house. In the process, they also realize the error of their previous societal system and decide to make some changes in Barbie Land, including better treatment for the Kens and all outcast dolls. Barbie and Ken apologize to each other and acknowledge their failings. Ken bemoans that he has no identity or, or purpose without Barbie. And that was also hinted at the beginning of the movie as well. So, so that, that where, um, where Ken is nothing without Barbie. So Barbie encouraged him to find an autumn, to work, Barbie encouraged him to find an identity. So, like, who you want to be? Like, an identity. Even though Ken's is Beach Ken, there, there's a little bit of, there's, a, there's room for an identity for Ken. So then, Barbie, who remains unsure of her own purpose and identity, meets with the spirit of Mattel co-founder Ruth Handler, who is who's being played by Rhea Perlman. 
who explains that Barbie's story has no set ending and her ever-evolving history surpasses that of her roots. Oh, and the, Mata and the Mattel CEO shows up. What? Oh boy, yeah, yeah. As I mentioned, you forget that Will Ferrell is in this movie. Yeah, so yeah. So then, of course, um, uh, the scene with with Barbie and the Matt and uh, Ruth Handler, where they're all in this white background, it's actually a pretty good moment too. Like, as if Barbie's deciding to like leave, like decide to like become who she wants to be. Like, who do you want to be? Who do you want to be? Even though. Even though there's, it's also mentioned that ideas are lived forever. That was also mentioned in the trailer. I forgot what the rest of the quote was. I forgot the what the early the earlier lines was for that quote, but I do know one of them said, "Ideas live forever." So there's something right there. So then, um, so then after that moment, all the all the Barbies, Kens, and Mattel executives bid Barbie goodbye. She decides to become human and return to the real world. Sometime later, Gloria and her and her husband and Sasha take Barbie, going by the name Barbara Handler, to to an appointment, which I'm pretty sure is a doctor's appointment, which is basically a doctor's appointment. And that's basically it. That's the end of the movie. That's the end of the movie. And yes, as I mentioned, uh, and yes, um, so, uh, Gloria has a husband who was briefly mentioned uh, early on in the movie, but I don't, I don't think anybody cared for that. But yes, at the end of the movie, Barbie go has an appointment, and at one point I thought it was for a job interview, but no, it was actually for a doctor's appointment. So that's basically so that's basically it, and that's the end of the movie. And that's the end of the movie. That is the Barbie movie. Now, as I mentioned, it is crazy. It's a crazy, crazy movie. Now, did I like it? Eh, I thought it was okay. But I had a lot of fun with it. I had a lot of fun with this movie, and I had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun with this. There was a. I had a. I had a lot of fun with this movie, but at the same. But at the same time, it's so crazy. It's crazy. There was a lot going on in this movie. I can't even tell. That I can't even tell what's going. I can't even. I. I almost can't even tell. I can tell what's going on, but I can't even tell. Like, huh? What? What's going on? Who? Like, what is it? Like, what is this? What am I watching? I guess from my point of view, like I said, I never grew up with the Barbie, but with Bar, I never grew up with Barbie. Even though the closest thing I was seeing Barbie and Ken in the Toy Story movies, but also, but also, but also, but also with the messaging as well. The message is all over the place. Like it's all over the place. You get the patriarchy, the matriarchy, feminism, identity. So many, so many messages in this movie. But I think, but if, if if I were to choose a message in this movie, I I believe it would be identity. It's just the identity of this of this movie. I believe finding out the identity of the identity of who of like who you are is like the main message of this movie because it's like because it's basically hinted it's hinted between Barbie like like do I really belong like what what about my identity what's the point of my identity in my land in my world if i'm in my own in my own world when going to the real world what's the point of that because at the end of the movie because at the end of the movie uh barbie because at the end of the movie before going to the real world she remains unsure of her own purpose and identity and of course and that's actually pretty good message i think that's one of the few messages in this movie that i like is identity Maybe Barbie is not enough. There is more to stereotypical Barbie than being a uh, Barbie. You know, there's more. There's more than that. There's more than that than me. There's more to you than me. There's a lot more to it. There's a lot more to it, and I think that's a good message. I wish they stuck with that message throughout the movie. If I, if I, if they want to deal with identity. In this in this movie, they should have used that message for the entire film, and 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 I know there's a lot going on in this movie. There's so many me messages and themes in this movie. Like there's a lot going on, but I believe identity is the sole message of this movie. Of this movie, in my per in my personal opinion, 
Now, the story itself is all over the place. I mean, I, I was able to follow along with the story, but like I said, it was crazy. Now, for the most part, the production itself is pretty good. Like, it really captures the world of Bar captures the world of Barbie. Margot Robbie, I will say this, she fits the role perfectly. And I'm glad that the filmmakers went with Margot Robbie. And, of course, all, all the other supporting characters. Ryan Gosling is a pretty good Ken. He was obviously the best part of this movie. He bring, he carries this film. Both him and Margot Robbie carry the film together. America Ferrera is a pretty good supporting pretty good supporting actress. She, play, she plays the character of Gloria pretty well. And, of course, the, da the daughter was okay. I mean, of course... Uh, of course, uh, it, 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 she, the daughter herself. I mean, look, props to the actors. Props to the actors for playing for playing Sasha. She was she. The actors did a did a very good job of what she was given. The character of Sasha was pretty annoying at times, but she did grow grow a little bit throughout the end of the movie. Will Ferrell was pretty forgettable in this movie, in my personal opinion. I mean, I wish. Um, I, I wish they could have written him a bit better instead of him, instead of Will Ferrell being, you know, Will Ferrell. I mean, I like Will Ferrell, but he was just basically he he was just playing himself in this movie, in in the in this movie. I mean, he was he was okay, but as I mentioned, he was just playing himself. And then the musical number, I'm just Ken. Oh my goodness, I can't imagine I, I, that that might get nominated for best original song, and. I hope there's a remix of I'm Just Ken with Peaches from the Mario movie. Make that happen. Make that happen. The Peaches song and the I'm Just Ken song mashed together. With the Peaches song and the and the I'm Just Ken song. Make that happen. Make that happen. Oh my god. Make that happen. Now... And, and of course, and, and of course, I think the direction of this film was okay. Greta Gerwig did a pretty good job with the direction of where she was going with this film, but uh, but at the end of the day, I thought the film as a whole, I I I thought it was okay. It's not for me, and I and I get it. I mean, this film is not for everybody, and I I can understand that. I mean, hey, not every film is gonna be made for everybody, and that's okay, you know. This film was obviously, obviously, this film was made for those who grew up with the Barbie doll because, because this is a PG thirteen. Because one of the reasons is, it's because it's a PG thirteen movie. It's a PG thirteen movie, so it's not a kids movie. By the way, this is not your typical kids movie. This is not your kid. This is not a kids movie. This is a movie where it, it where a center audience is basically those who play with Barbie, those who grew up playing the with the Barbie dolls, and that makes sense to why. Uh, a lot of people came out to see this movie because a lot of people, grew, a lot of people, especially the women, because a lot of people, especially the women, grew up with the Barbie doll, and that's and that is something. That's why this movie did so well at the box office. It made money. It had an audience, an audience that grew up with the Barbie dolls, and and that's that and that's basically it. And that's basically it right there. And basically, yeah. So, so yeah. So, anyway, that's my take on uh, on Barbies. And I know a lot of people, and I understand a lot of people are not gonna like this movie, and that's okay. It's not, it's not, it's not my, it's not. I and I get it, it's not for everybody, and that's totally fine. I mean, it's not for me, but I, but in my, you know, but from my own experience, I I had fun with this film. It was a fun ride. It was an okay. It was an okay movie, but I, but I enjoyed it. As as a fun typical, fun typical summer movie. So yeah. So anyway, there you have it. That's my take on the Barbie movie. Now, what did you think of the Barbie movie? Did you like the movie? Did you thought the film was okay? Did you not like the movie? I would like to hear your thoughts. So anyway, this concludes part one of of Barbenheimer. So this special will conclude with Barbenheimer part two, Oppenheimer in the next episode so anyway thank you all for tuning into koto cinema this is mark koto aka koto man remember to watch movies and stay positive and to be continued